With the fate of humanity in line, this astronaut has to venture into space with no promises that he'll ever come back the same on Earth. So what kind of fate is waiting for him on the other side of another galaxy? In the distant future, Earth is becoming more inhabitable each day due to a large-scale infestation that caused a global famine. This has nearly exhausted all of Earth's natural resources and food supply. The movie starts by introducing Cooper, an Air Force pilot who is losing control of his own jet. He awakens from this dream when his daughter, Murph, calls him. At breakfast, Cooper eats with Tom, his eldest, and Donald, his father-in-law. Tom teases Murph about her stories because she tells them that a ghost is knocking things off her shelves. As a non-believer of ghosts himself, Cooper challenges Murph to prove that her ghost truly exists with science and facts. The family finally reaches the school, and while Tom attends his class, Cooper leaves Murph in the car to attend the parent-teacher conference. The principal shares that Tom has a huge potential to become a farmer there, but Cooper expresses his desire to send him to college. However, the principal is not interested in doing that. As it turns out, in this reality, people no longer believe in scientific pursuits. Most of the population thinks that scientific breakthroughs like the moon landing are mere hoaxes and political propaganda. A world where almost everyone religiously believes in conspiracy theories and misinformation? No wonder the Earth is ending. Government-run schools also discourage students from widening their horizons. To them, solving the food shortage through traditional ways like farming is the best response to their current situation. Unfortunately, rather than progress, this reality is rather regressing to their primitive ways. Rather than trying, they'd rather resign to their fate and hold on to their band-aid solutions. Because of this, establishments like NASA lost their credibility, then eventually their resources, causing Cooper to lose his job as a NASA pilot and become a farmer instead. The teacher reminds him to help Murph, a believer who takes after her father, to blend in with her non-believer peers. Then, during a dust storm, Murph realizes that she left the windows open in her room. Cooper helps her to close it, and when the dust settles on the ground, a pattern appears. Murph thinks that with this, Cooper would finally believe her ghost story. However, the next day, Cooper only tells her that it is a gravitational anomaly. Cooper also discovers that the pattern is coordinates communicated through binary codes. He pulls out a map to mark the coordinates with Murph. When he discovers the location, he prepares to go to that location alone. Yes, alone. However, Murph, who is very stubborn and curious, hides under the blankets when Cooper drives off, leaving him no choice but to take her. The coordinates bring them to an abandoned establishment where Cooper is tased and brought inside by TARS, the military robot. Cooper finally regains consciousness, and TARS questions him on how he acquired the coordinate. Dr. Amelia, a NASA scientist, also takes him to a conference room where he sees government officials and, finally, his daughter, who is currently conversing with another scientist, one that's more familiar to him, Professor Brand. Thinking they're in danger, Cooper tries to lie their way out of the facility. Brand reassures him they're from NASA, his previous workplace, so he finally lets his guard down. Brand reveals to him that NASA was resurrected for its expertise. Their theories suggest that the last surviving crop might not survive the next fall, and the infestation is taking the oxygen for humans. Even if humans can survive starvation, they will still perish from suffocation. Lastly, NASA predicts that Murph's generation will be the last to survive on Earth. For those reasons, NASA began the Lazarus mission, a series of expeditions to find a new home planet. Brand then invites Cooper to pilot a spacecraft that will lead Project Endurance, the last Lazarus mission NASA will ever conduct, their last hope. Despite being initially reluctant, Cooper accepts the offer and gets briefed by the officials. There he discovers that NASA has a wormhole near Saturn that will lead them to another galaxy. Everyone in the room thinks someone placed the wormhole there and gave them access to their chosen habitable planets. They strongly believe that someone has been orchestrating an out-of-this-world plan to save humanity. NASA sent 12 rangers inside the wormhole 10 years ago to check the 12 planets. However, out of 12, only three planets are confirmed habitable, enough for humans, thus the start of Project Endurance, which has two plans, Plan A and Plan B. Plan A, which is still in theory, is to use the spacecraft to reach the wormhole to harness gravity and send the entire facility and the other survivors into space. Plan B is to restart humanity by sending thousands of fertilized eggs to the new planet. After hearing that Plan A still has unsolved problems, Cooper begins to have doubts. However, Brand gives a heartfelt speech and implores Cooper to trust him. Finally convinced, he gives in and heads back to pack his things. Murph, who is upset about his decision, sulks and pushes him away. The next day, Murph tries to make him stay by showing Cooper that the decoded message from the bookshelves is saying, stay. Nevertheless, Cooper has already made up his mind. 
To comfort her, he gives her a watch and explains that time and space runs more slowly than on Earth and that they may be the same age when he returns. Murph throws the watch out of frustration and shuts him out. Cooper still promises her that he will come back. The spacecraft launches and Cooper, along with Amelia, Tars, and two more crew members, Ramilly and Doyle finally leave Earth and reach the space station. After some preparations and a good luck message from Brand, the Endurance space station finally makes its way to the vast space. While Romilly is entering his chamber to prepare for deep sleep, Cooper asks Amelia to brief him about the three astronauts they'll meet, Dr. Mann, Dr. Miller, and Dr. Edmund. Before getting into his chamber, Cooper sends his family a video message. Back on Earth, Brand takes the video message back on Earth to his family and takes Murph as his student. The crew finally reaches Saturn. Cooper immediately checks his family messages, but Murph refuses to talk to him. The team finally enters this gateway to another galaxy, and everyone felt the pressure's strength. Finally, the ship stabilizes, signaling their arrival. The crew, after careful deliberation, decides to go to the planet near the black hole where an hour is seven years on Earth. To make this work, the crew decides to travel on the opposite side of the black hole so they will not be affected by the time shift. Romilly stays behind and the other crew members, accompanied by Case, another robot, land on the planet and is greeted by the vast ocean. Since their clock is ticking, the crew hurries with their missions. Amelia and Doyle head out to the planet to collect samples, while Case locates Dr. Miller's beacon. The two plans to collect more data, but Cooper, upon realizing that there is an enormous wave heading their way, orders the two to head back immediately. However, Amelia refuses to leave without Miller's data. She falls on her knees, so Case transforms into a wheel and hurriedly takes her back into the ship. When Doyle is about to enter the ship, the wave reaches them and sweeps him away. The wave floods the ship as they stumble around inside. The ship sustains damages and needs time to get fixed. This upsets Cooper because this means decades of Earth's time will pass before them, and he snaps at Amelia as he can't help but mourn for the time they lost. However, he snaps out of it when he realizes that another wave is about to crash them. Fortunately, he manages to fly them back to safety and return to Romilly who is aged and informs them that 23 years have passed. Cooper immediately checks his messages from Earth. In just minutes, he watches Tom live half his life. Murph, who has also turned into an adult, sends her first and last message and tearfully tells him to come back home. The crew has to decide which of the last two promising planets they will visit next. After discovering Amelia's relationship with Edmund and how this might affect her judgment, the two choose to follow Man since he's actively sending them transmissions. This upsets Amelia and she explains that she still believes Edmund's planet is the better call and if this risky mission fails, Plan B will be their only option. On Earth, Brand, on his deathbed, finally reveals to Murph, who has become a scientist and his closest aide, that Project Endurance wasn't meant to return and that all his theories and plans are lies. He hopes that the crew will restart the human population by themselves. Murph sends a video message to the crew and even accuses Amelia of being part of the scheme. The crew finally arrives at Man's planet, and Man can help but tear up in joy when he realizes he finally has company. He starts to brief them on his discovery. They are in an area with no breathable air, but the lower surface might have one where life can hopefully survive. While gathered together, the crew finally receives Murph's video message and everyone is in shock. Amelia tearfully defends herself from the accusation. Man tells everyone that their team already knew that and even justifies that Brand's actions are for the greater good of humanity. Upon hearing this, Cooper quits and plans to return home. Murph tells her colleague, Getty, about Brand's dying message and refuses to disclose this information to the public. However, she has a gut feeling that Plan A still has a chance and she plans to check her childhood room for answers. As this is the last mission before returning to Earth, Cooper joins Man in scouting the lower surface and their conversation takes a turn when Man implies he's ready to do anything to survive. Then, all of a sudden, Man reveals to Cooper that he's been lying about his data and pushes him off the edge of an abyss after removing his transmission device. Man kicks his hands, but Cooper drags him down with him. Man further reveals that the planet is not habitable and he lied, so NASA will send somebody to rescue him. The two get into a heated fight and Man is able to crack Cooper's gear and leaves him to suffocate to death. However, he chose the wrong person to mess with. Cooper is so stubborn that he refuses to die right at that moment. He finally manages to take hold of the transmission device and shouts for help. 
Amelia and Case rush to get him and save his life. He reveals man's schemes, so Amelia tries to warn Romilly. However, she's too late when Romilly gets caught in an exploding trap, ultimately causing his death. Man also faces death because of his desperation and greed to survive on his own. With Cooper's expertise, the last remaining crew members head off the planet and succeed. However, Case informs them that they are now heading to the black hole. Since they are out of options and cannot return to Earth, the duo improvises by planning to use the black hole to propel them to Edmund's planet. Since this would require sacrifices, Tars and Cooper eject their ships away from the spacecraft, leaving Amelia to finish the mission alone. Cooper drifts towards the black hole and due to the pressure, he loses consciousness. He wakes up to a voice telling him to eject and flies into the empty cold space. While drifting, he finally finds a wall and realizes that it is made of books. He discovers that every column is a past event in Murph's life. He looks through the night of his departure and pushes the books to send a Morse code saying, stay. In another column, he desperately shouts to Murph to stop him from leaving, but fails. Murph, in the present time, finally realizes that her childhood ghost is her father after looking through her things. After realizing he could send a message to Murph, he sends the same binary codes they found. It appears that this has been his fate all along. A cruel one, but an important step towards saving humanity. Because, as it turns out, the world didn't choose him. They chose Murph. He chose Murph. He sends Murph another Morse code through the watch she left, and Murph immediately understands the situation. With his help, she finally solves Plan A. Tars tells Cooper that the dimension where they are is closing, as if on cue. He discovers that the creatures helping them are humans that evolved into omniscient beings. Cooper finally wakes up in a hospital room and discovers they're in a station near Saturn. Upon hearing the name, he smiles as he thinks it was named after him. But the nurse laughs and says it's named after his daughter, who is on her way to see him finally. After he's recovered, Cooper finally meets with his aged daughter, who is behind the progression and salvation of humanity. Murph then tells him to find Amelia and relay the good news. Cooper, along with Tars, then plans to head off again, this time to bring Amelia back. Unbeknownst to them, Amelia just landed on Edmund's planet and stares at the nothingness of space, unaware that humanity is saved. Another movie about outer space? Okay, you have a point. But hear us out. This movie is a must-watch. Not only do you get a star-studded cast, but this movie is also a box office hit as this became the 10th highest grossing film of 2014. But enough with the credentials. If you want to immerse yourself in its empty and vast space, but also witness the warmth of humanity, this movie will surely not disappoint. Please subscribe to our channel to be notified when we upload. And don't forget to suggest movies that you think we should recap in the future in the comments down below.